Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this problem, they want us to take this velocity versus time graph, and then from that, we need to draw a position and an acceleration versus time graph. And then for part B, they want us to figure out what the acceleration is at three seconds. So right there. All right, so I've drawn our acceleration versus time graph here. Now we just need to fill it in. So whenever we have a velocity versus time graph, to get the acceleration from that, we find the slope. That's the change in the rise over the run. The rise in this case is meters per second or velocity. The run is seconds. So when you have meters per second divided by seconds, that is meters per second squared. So for the slope for the graph, there's two distinct sections. The second section is pretty easy. It's a flat line, meaning there is no slope, right? The velocity is staying the exact same, so the acceleration will be zero. So from four to 10, the acceleration is zero. All right, so let's figure out the slope for this section right here. I'm gonna do it right here just to save some space. So to find the slope, it's the change in the rise and the run as we, find, as we already discussed. And change of anything is always final minus initial. So the final velocity for this section is two meters per second, meters per second. And then minus what we started at is a negative two meters per second. And as we all know, whenever you minus a negative, it's the same thing as just adding. So we have four meters per second on the top. And what was the time? We went from zero to four seconds. So delta T is four seconds. So four divided by four gives us a positive one meter per second. So we have one. So we have one right here. And then we drop down to zero. So here is our acceleration versus time graph. I did this one first because the position versus time graph is a little bit more involved. So let's scroll down to give us a little bit more space. Okay, so I've drawn our position versus time graph here. So now when we have a velocity versus time graph, to find the displacement, we find the area underneath the curve. So for zero to two seconds, we have this triangle here. So it's pretty easy to calculate that. So at two seconds, we'll have the area of a triangle, which is one half times the base and the height. And then we have the base, which is two seconds. So one half times two seconds times the height, which is a negative two meters per second. So negative two times two is negative four multiplied by a half is negative two, and that is meters. So from zero, where we started, down at two seconds, we come down to negative two. And now going to four seconds, we have the exact opposite of that. We have a base of two seconds and a height of two, positive two meters per second. So now, at four seconds, we have one half times the base times the height. So one half times two seconds times two meters per second gives us a positive two meters. So now from where we started here at two seconds, we're gonna go up a displacement of two meters. So now from four seconds onward, the velocity is the exact same. Now don't get confused because the acceleration versus time graph, that means it is zero because there's no slope. But for here, we're trying to find the area underneath the curve. You can do it two ways though. If you find the area from two to four seconds, we have a base of two times the height, which is two, so every two seconds will be going four meters. Another way you could do it is just the velocity formula. Velocity is the change in x over the change in time. We're trying to find what the change in x is, so we multiply both sides by delta t. And we have delta x is equal to the velocity times the change in the time. So now what is the velocity? Well, it's two meters per second. What is the change in time? It is two seconds. So two times two gives us the four meters per second that we just found by doing the area under the curve.
So either way gives you the same answer. It's just whatever is easiest for you. And we were able to do that in this case as well because we had a constant velocity. If it was changing, obviously we wouldn't have been able to do just the simple velocity equation there. So every two seconds, we're going to be going up four meters. So from here, we're going to go up four. And then eight, we're going to go from four up to eight there. And then from eight to 10, we'll go up four, which is up to 12. So about right there. So now as we connect the dots, our graph will have a shape kind of like this. So here is our position versus time graph and our acceleration versus time graph. So now for part B, they want us to find the acceleration of the train at t equals three seconds. You can do that by the acceleration versus time graph at three seconds right here. We just go up and it is one meter per second. So for part B, acceleration at three seconds equals positive one meter per second squared. And in case they ask, if you look at the graph, we're going from a negative velocity to a positive velocity. So there is a turning point as well, right at two seconds. And you can see that from the position versus time graph, we're going backwards and then we turn and go in the positive direction.